one look at Clint, Tanya, and Priya, and you can tell they're not your typical Tim Hortons employees. You may even think, token hires? Think again. They are the unexpected boom to this business's bottom line. They are proof there is a huge return on disability. Hi there, can we help you today? Mark Wafer owns seven Tim Hortons franchises in Toronto. 18 years ago, he decided to do good and stumbled on a money-making secret that was very good for business. When we first opened our uh, store in uh, 1995, I realized very quickly that you know, my staff weren't going to be able to keep up the dining room. It was a large store, 65 feet, and the, the dining room, uh, my staff couldn't keep up. I had a need. I had to hire somebody. I'm expecting a lot of people to come in for soup and chili this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to be ready. Okay. Okay. That somebody was Clint Sparling, ready to start working like yesterday. And the thing is, Mark got that. Mark himself is hearing impaired. His own disability made him open to hiring someone no one else would. After about two weeks, Clint was ready to work. And very quickly, I realized he had become my best employee. Clint has Down syndrome, but here it doesn't matter. He makes the same money as everyone else. He's expected to do the same work as everyone else. But he delivers, you guessed it, like no one else. Tim Hornets uh, is a wonderful place to hang out. And, and I just and love boss to is work. listening. You can't say you hang out at work. No, it's a different way of saying uh, I was born to work. He works so hard, loves his job so much, he hardly calls in sick and routinely has to be reminded to go home at the end of his shift. As Mark's business grew, he hired more people with disabilities. And with every store and every hire, profits went up, big time. 41 of Mark's employees, roughly a third of his workforce, has a disability from managers to bakers, and they're not just his top performers. More often than not, they are his outperformers. We have one uh, individual who's uh, uh, baking in, in, in one of our stores, one of our busiest stores, and she's profoundly deaf. And her productivity rate is 18.4% higher than the person she replaced, and that person had been working that job for nine years. Tanya Walsh also takes an obvious pride in raising the bar. She has autism and a spotless work ethic that has earned her two promotions in seven years. Actually, really hard to and everything. That's how hard working I am. Even all my other co-workers at Tim Hortons and MBC, you work so hard, Tanya. And then there's Priya Premshuk. She has an intellectual delay but has no problem keeping up with dirty tables. A bit shy, she finds it easier doing her job than talking about it. What do you like about it? Hmm, tough questions, huh? Yeah. What's not so tough to figure out? All three are loyal, productive employees, and the effect is contagious. Not only do Mark's disabled workers tend to stick around, so do his others. In an industry where the turnover rate alone can sink you, Mark is sailing. It can cost me up to $4,000 to replace a frontline worker in a Tim Hortons. Now, if my turnover rate is 40% and my colleague down the street is 75 and we're both doing just as good a job, I'm making more money. How much of this is about charity for you? Zero. None. And in New York City, a Canadian man is making a career out of proving there is no mystery to those numbers. Rich Donovan coined the phrase, return on disability. Rich, who has cerebral palsy, is a self-described financial geek who left behind a successful career on Wall Street to crunch very different numbers. And in true entrepreneurial spirit, Rich suggested we caption his interview because his message is so important he doesn't want you to miss a word of it. This is the charity. It's not a special job for special people. There's real profitability in driving this forward. Rich is used to sympathy and charitable stares, but it's his mission to coach businesses to see past that. 
His return on disability is an index he uses to track the shares of firms that best deal with disabled people. The bottom line? Pity those firms that don't. And how do you change their minds? Numbers. Numbers. It all comes down to numbers. It all comes down to an observable measurement that nobody can dispute. And America's largest drugstore chain is the gold standard on how to do it big and how to do it right. This is Walgreens Distribution Center in Windsor, Connecticut, one of 20 the company operates and one of the most profitable in the entire country. The secret weapon here too? Nearly half of the 600 people who work here are disabled. Right now we're between 40, 45% of the people inside the facility at all levels. So the director all the way down uh, have a disability. Scott Sylvester runs the distribution center. There's no them here, just a big enthusiastic us. A vision born seven years ago from a savvy senior VP who has a child with autism. It's now a corporate policy and not because it's the right thing to do. It's obvious to say that it's the right thing to do from a, from a heart feel good perspective. Um, but it really is truly from a business perspective. Um, the workforce that we have in the facility, they're dedicated, they come to work uh, every day, they give 100% every day, they have good attitudes, they thoroughly enjoy the opportunity to work. The plant was designed to make it easy for anyone to work here. Employees can opt to follow icons instead of text, and pictures are used as markers. And small changes made productivity go up for everyone. So whether a person maybe doesn't read or can't sequence numbers, then maybe they can relate to rhinoceros. They know what a rhinoceros is. So when you give direction, you can give direction to go to station 55 or rhinoceros. Oh, right. right. And in the, in, when you're giving that direction out to the group, you can say it both ways. And however you, whichever piece of that message you need to use, the process that you take. Hi, Jen. How are you? Good. It's inclusive go and with? also happens to streamline the workflow. The, like the payoff? Huge. Our facility is uh, one of the top facilities. Um, you know, the building itself is about 20% more efficient than other facilities in, in our chain. And uh, you know, this is a, it's, it's been great. Everything that we do that we've designed into it has benefited everybody. And that is the genius behind the Walgreens model. It's innovation designed with disability in mind that made the company big money. I have 41 employees who have a disability. In 2011, we did not have a single hour of lost sick time for those 41 individuals. Dollars and cents, it's the winning mantra and closer to home, Mark's message is catching fire. On this night, he's in Oakville, Ontario, giving the business community there his remarkable pitch. He is so in demand, he gives more than 100 talks a year across the country. We can't make change with this by talking about the emotional. And we can't make change by talking about compliance and laws and legislation. We can make change with the business case. Doing good because it's good for business. Now we're talking. And Mark insists businesses simply can't afford to miss out on the disability train. We're looking at about a million workers short by 2025. And that's not just skilled labor. We're talking about entry level positions. If you don't do this now, you're running the risk of not having staff 10 years from now. And you know, what's been good for Mark's business has been good for workers like Clint too. Clint recently married his sweetheart Katie. They own a condo and live on their own with some help from their families. Do you still see yourself staying here or going somewhere else or? Actually, uh, there's, there's no place else in the whole world but Tim Hortons. <laughs> How much did he pay you to say that? Ooh. Uh, honestly, yeah. uh, none of whatsoever. <laughs> you can't buy that kind of advertising, all because one businessman spotted an opportunity and discovered it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Joanna Brumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.